Thomas Hardy is probably most well known for his novels, such as The Mayor of Casterbridge, Tess of the Dubervilles, and Under the Greenwood Tree. However, he considered himself more of a poet than a novelist, writing over 900 poems throughout his life, yet not publishing his first book of poetry until 1898. Thomas Hardy was born one of four children on June 2, 1840, in Higher Bockhampton, an area just east of Dorchester in the UK. His father, Thomas Hardy Sr., was a builder and a stonemason. Jemima, his mother, was regarded as a forward-thinking woman for her era, where it was believed that a woman's role was to find a man to take care of her and have children. She discouraged her children from marrying or having children of their own. Thomas was often ill as a child and spent much of his time reading, a passion encouraged by his mother. When Thomas was eight years old, he was sent to school in Bockhampton. Then, at ten, he was sent to nearby Dorchester, where he would walk three miles to school every day. Instead of following into his father's business, he was sent to apprentice as an architect when he was 16, eventually moving to London in 1862 to work as an architect. While he was in London, he wrote poetry and submitted it to publishing houses, but he was unable to find a publisher. According to Thomas, publishers were not interested in his works because of his social class and lack of a prestigious education. In 1867, he moved to Dorset County in Dorset. He continued to work as an architect while also writing novels and poetry. He had a close relationship with his cousin, Trefina Sparks. Trefina was 11 years younger than him, and it is speculated that they had a romantic relationship, inspiring poems such as In a Ulysse, Near Weatherbury, and Upon Her Death in 1890, the poem Thoughts of Fina. In 1870, Hardy visited Cornwall to do some architecture work on a local church, where he met Emma Levina Gifford, who would later become his wife. Throughout this time, he continued to submit his work to publishers and tried to get his novel Poor Man and a Lady published. However, it was rejected by publishers as being too hostile towards the upper class. Not giving up, he began another novel, and eventually, in 1871, he found a publisher willing to release his work, and his novel Desperate Remedies was published. Desperate Remedies is the story of a lady's maid who gets caught up in a murder plot. It was successful enough to allow Hardy to leave architecture and focus on his passion for writing. Hardy asked Emma's father for her hand in marriage, who said no because of her social class being above his. Emma came from a well-off family as compared to Hardy's working class family. Thomas's mother was opposed to the marriage as well, thinking her children should stay unmarried. Hardy continued to write and receive accolades for additional novels such as Under the Greenwood Tree and Far From the Madding Crowd. Despite both families withholding their blessings, his financial success as a writer enabled him to marry Emma in 1874. Thomas and Emma moved multiple times between London and Dorset County. Eventually, they settled near Dorchester, where in 1883, Hardy leased 1.5 acres of land from the Duchy of Cornwall estate and began construction on a home for the two of them. Hardy designed the house himself and used his family's building connections to construct it. His brother Henry followed in their father's business, also working as a builder. Hardy later purchased the land for 450 pounds, around 57,000 pounds today. A pretty darn good deal. The residence would be known as Max Gate, named after the nearby toll booth operated by Henry Mack, who was the last keeper of the toll booth. The house was surrounded by open land, so Thomas planted numerous trees to screen the home. During construction, they found Roman relics on the site and graves and bones. Instead of being disturbed by this news, Hardy became an amateur archaeologist, studying and learning about the history and bones of those that were found. Additional skeletons were uncovered 
when digging a drain at the house, which turned out to be a dramatic sight. In 1980, during the construction of a bypass, they discovered a Neolithic stone circle that I'm sure Hardy would have appreciated. Max Gate was extended from 1894 to 1896, doubling the size. Various rooms were added to the rear of the property, including a new kitchen, two attic rooms, which became Emma's, and a second square truant was added. Emma had asked Hardy to create her a space which she could write, paint, read, and sew in peace. So he built her two small rooms in the attic above his. By the mid-1890s, their marriage was becoming increasingly hostile. Emma eventually moved completely into the attic, a space she described as sweet refuge and solace. Thomas Hardy was such a celebrity in the day that tourists would peer over the hedges and walls. They would even go up to the house and peer through the windows in order to see him. So he designed special shutters that could be raised from the bottom to prevent people from looking in. These were inspired by a similar design he saw in London. He also built a brick wall around the property for added seclusion. It was at Maxgate that he wrote most of his famous novels, including The Woodlanders and Jude the Obscure. In 1886, The Mayor of Casterbridge was published. In it, he uses the nearby Dorchester as inspiration for many of the locations used in the book. And in 1888, Wessex Tales, his first collection of short stories was published. Tess of the Dubervilles was published in 1891. The novel tackles many issues of the day, including race and the exploitation of the poor by the upper class. The novel was considered scandalous in some circles, which in turn helped sales of the book, making Hardy a very rich man, which is ironic considering his outspoken view on the upper class, and that he was notorious for not paying his servants very well. His last novel was Jude the Obscure. The novel follows a young man who tries to better himself through study and hard work, yet his low social status prevents him from moving ahead. The book includes themes such as having children out of wedlock, murder, and suicide. Some clergy would burn the book, and the Pall Mall Gazette called it Jude the Obscene. Even his wife Emma hated the book, calling it sacrilegious. Because of the extreme hostility towards the novel, from that point, Thomas focused solely on writing poetry. Many famous names would visit Max Gate, such as W.B. Yeats, Robert Louis Stevenson, and the Prince of Wales, who would later become King Edward VIII. Just imagine the conversations that happened around that table for afternoon tea. Actually, you might not enjoy it. Thomas's dog, Wessex, was allowed to run wild throughout the home. It would often bite people, including the servants and guests, and the dog would jump on the table during meals. In 1921, Lady Cynthia Asquith described the dog as the most despotic dog guests have ever suffered under. There are different accounts of how Florence, Dugdale, and Thomas met. However, it is primarily believed that in 1905, at the age of 26, Florence wrote to Hardy expressing her admiration for his work and requesting a visit. He agreed, and they struck up a friendship. By 1906, Florence was carrying out research for Hardy, and Florence was introducing herself as Hardy's secretary. Later in 1910, Emma befriended Florence at a lecture she was giving in London, apparently unaware of Florence's relationship with her husband. Emma invited Florence to visit Max Gate, and Thomas wrote the poem after the visit, which described Florence's large, luminous living eyes. He dedicated the poem to F.E.D. For the next two years, Hardy and Emma competed for Florence's companionship. Throughout much of 1912, Florence stayed away from Max Gate. She published a children's book called Lucy's Garden. She also benefited from the will of Thornley Stoker, the brother of Bram Stoker, whose wife she had helped care for in Dublin, Ireland. Emma died on November 27, 1912, in her attic room. The death of Emma hit Thomas hard, leaving him devastated and full of regret for the way they had treated each other. In the aftermath, he poured his heart into writing countless poems in honor of her. Florence was in Weymouth 
when Emma passed away, returning shortly after. A little over a year after Emma died, in February 1914, Thomas and Florence were married. Hardy was 73 years old, with an age difference of 39 years between the two. The wedding was kept a secret and took place in Enfield on a Tuesday morning with just three people in attendance. As Hardy grew older, Florence looked after him. She protected him from any unwanted visitors and would often read to him, behaving more like a nursemaid than a wife. She also helped write his autobiography, written in the third person so that it could be published after his death in Florence's name. In the weeks leading up to Christmas 1927, Hardy became increasingly weak and developed a chill over the Christmas period, and he lost his appetite. Florence's sister Eva, who was a nurse, came to help care for Hardy. On the morning of Wednesday, January 11th, he asked for a rasher of bacon to be cooked for him over the open fire, and he spoke about how that was the way his mother had cooked it. In the early evening, he asked Florence to read him a verse from the Rubaiyat of Omar Khayyam, and around 8.30 p.m., he suffered a heart attack. A doctor was summoned, and Hardy passed away in his bedroom on January 11, 1928, at the age of 87. It was well known by his family that he wished to be buried at the St. Michael Church Cemetery among graves of his family and his first wife, Emma. However, Sir Sidney Cockrell and Sir James Barry wanted his ashes to be buried in Westminster Abbey in the Poet's Corner. Florence, grief-stricken, eventually compromised and consented to his ashes being sent to Westminster Abbey and his heart remaining in the Stinsford graveyard at St. Michael Church. Henry and Kate, Thomas's brother and sister, were not aware of this agreement and were quite upset when they found out. There is a story that the surgeon who removed his heart left the room and a cat jumped on the table and ate a portion of the heart. Then when the surgeon returned and found out what happened, he killed the cat and had the cat buried along with the heart. There is no evidence to support this story, and it is just an urban legend that has been passed down throughout generations. There were three church services for Hardy. One was in Westminster Abbey with Florence and his sister Kate in attendance. His ashes were buried in Poet's Corner, and a spade of Dorset earth was sprinkled in the casset. Representatives of the royal family were in attendance, among other dignitaries. At Stinsford, another service was held at the grave of his first wife, Emma, where Hardy's brother was the chief mourner. This is where his heart was buried. All business was suspended for one hour in Dorchester, and the St. Peter's Church in the center of town held a service for the public. Florence continued to live at Max Gate, inheriting the house and the royalties of Hardy's books. In later years, she was heavily involved with charitable works to improve housing for those in need and managing Hardy's legacy. Florence passed away on October 17, 1937, due to cancer. After Florence's death, Max Gate and its contents were auctioned off in 1938. The house was purchased by his younger sister, Kate. The contents of his study were left to the Dorset County Museum in Dorchester. Then in 1940, after Kate died, the house was left to the National Trust. There are no descendants, as Thomas and his siblings did not have any children. This is most likely due to the influence of their mother, who was opposed to marriage and children. Thomas Hardy was more than a writer and a poet. He was a chronicler of the struggles and realities of life during his era. He dealt with themes of class and mistreatment of the underprivileged. Through depictions of rural life in the English countryside, Hardy gave voice to those who called these regions home.